Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Eric, and in today's episode, we're going to be covering the topic of unions in C++. Let's do this. Now, a while back, I taught you how to create structures in C++. Now, as a quick refresher, a structure is basically something that allows you to group different data types together into one spot. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to be covering unions, which is syntactically similar to a structure, except for one difference. Instead of typing in the word struct, you replace it with the word union. Despite their syntactical similarities, in the background, it's actually very different from one another. So let's take a look at how a structure is created. So struct, and then followed by the name of the structure, and then curly brackets and a semicolon. And then inside, you would list out your variables. So data type one, variable name, and then semicolon. And then data type two, variable name semicolon and on and on and on to create a union all you have to do is type in instead of the word struct you type in union and then the name of the union followed by curly brackets and a semicolon and then inside same idea applies data type one variable name data type two variable name now do note that unions cannot store strings inside okay so if you plan to use strings inside something that allows you to group data together use a structure if not you can use a union now what makes the two different from each other well one of the things that makes unions different from a structure is that unions use the same memory location okay so what i mean is that all of the variables inside of a union use the same memory location so basically it uses the same space whereas a structure it uses different locations okay so let's say we have two integers inside our structure so int and then num1 int num2 and then let's say we do the same thing for unions as well so int num1 int num2 so one of the main features that makes unions different from structures is that unions again use the same memory location meaning they use the same amount of space as the biggest data type stored inside of a union. So in this case, we're using the same data types inside of a union, and that is an integer. Now, what is the total size or the maximum size a union can be for this example? Now, in this example, the biggest data type is an integer. So that means the biggest size the union can have is the integer. So on some computers, the data type for integer is two bytes. For others, it's four bytes. Nowadays, you would see them as mostly four bytes. So in this case, this union would be four bytes however for a structure in this case despite it having two integer types the total size for the structure is going to be eight bytes as you can see for structures the total amount of memory space is additive so that means it's the sum of all the variable types inside the structure makes up the total size of the structure itself whereas a union it's based off of the biggest data type so if i were to change num2 into a float so float num2 then the biggest size a union can have for this one is going to be based off of the size of float because a float is bigger than an int so it would no longer be four bytes but rather something a little bit bigger okay so with that out of the way let's take a look at an example on how to use a union well if you know how to use a structure you basically know how to use a union already however there's one more difference you have to note so let's create a union so union let's say hotel room curly bracket semicolon and then let's say int room number and then let's say float price the reason we're using a float instead of an int is that a price can be decimal values so that's why we're using float which basically allows us to store decimal values so let's create a hotel room variable so hotel room my room semicolon and then let's assign it a room number so my room is room 100 actually dot room number equals 100 and then let's see out that value so my room dot room number and line okay and then if we were to compile and run this program it should show the number 100 and as you can see on our console window it shows the number 100 okay so let's say we want to give our room a price so my room dot price equals to 32.99 or yeah and then let's see out that value so my room dot price and line so first off it would store room number as 100 and then display it and then it would store price as 32.99 and then display it so let's compile and run this program and as you can see the value stored shows 100 and then 32.99 which is perfect because we stored 100 followed by 32.99 however what happens if we were to see out the room number again 
what do you think will happen now again a union uses the same memory location for all the variables inside of it okay so that means they're sharing the same space and as you can see it shows the first two values as expected however on the third line where it's supposed to show the room number it displays a completely different number it in fact it's a ridiculously huge number it's not 100 at all why is this well this is one of the main things that makes unions very different from structures and that is the fact that these variables are using the same space so let's say your own room okay let's say you have like a huge thing inside your room how do you add more stuff into your room you have to clear space right so that's basically what's happening right here so it's basically clearing the space that the room number was taking up in order to store the value for 32.99 which is the price so if we were to try to see out the room number out again it would no longer be 100 because it was already cleared the moment we gave the room's price of 32.99 and that's basically why it shows a ridiculous different number and that basically concludes today's tutorial on how to create unions in C++ now if you have any questions about it please be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer it as soon as possible thank you for watching and I'll see you next time